Now let's continue the last topic. Uh, the last complex we have this. So I have already told you that in this case, as it is highly paramagnetic in nature, so these uh, five electrons will remain unpaired and outer d orbitals will be used to accommodate six water as a ligand. So these six orbitals which are of same energy now due to hybridization. Uh, they are accommodating six water molecule. Water is donating their electrons in. Fine. So, <coughs> what is the overall uh, nature? We have found that this is sp three d two hybridized complex. Outer d orbitals are used, not the n minus one, but four d are used. Fine. Now, number of unpaired electron in the last situation, you see number of unpaired electron are five, so it will be highly paramagnetic in nature. Fine. So, again, I am telling you here. I have not changed the oxidation state of iron, but if the ligand is changed again, the magnetic behavior is changing, right? So later on we will see that such such explanation cannot be given by valence bond theory. So this was the limitation later on we will find that same metal in the same oxidation state but different ligand, how its magnetic behavior changes, right? Now let me take some other examples. Some I will take two complexes of cobalt. So. <coughs> Let's see cobalt and plus three oxidation state. First complex of cobalt is this. So we'll find oxidation state of cobalt is plus three in this case. Fine. So uh, before writing, it's very very important uh, from examination point of view. Student usually make mistake while writing the configuration. Once the configuration is wrong, then you cannot solve the question correctly. So First of all, you write configuration of the metal. You should be knowing the atomic number. So the configuration of cobalt is 3d7, 4s2. Fine. Then the second step you should do is to find correct oxidation state. I have found it is plus 3. And write the configuration of plus 3 ion separately here before writing the orbital representation. This is very important. Right. So it is 3d6. Now, this complex of uh, Cobalt is found to be diamagnetic in nature. This is found experimentally. Remember, I I don't know, but uh, theoretically I don't know, but uh, experimentally we we can calculate number of unpaired electrons, right? So number of unpaired electrons not found in this case, so it is diamagnetic. Let's explain this behavior using a VBT. Fine. So first cobalt 3 ion, the orbital representation is like this, 3D, 4S and 4P. The configuration you should write from here, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3D, 6 is there, fine. So now, next, we have to accommodate 6 cyanide ligand, so we need 6 vacant d orbitals, right? Now, not uh, d orbital, but 6 orbitals are required. Now here, we have 4 orbitals which are vacant here. Either we have to use the outer 4d or we can use the inner 3d, right? But you see in this case, the inner 3d, they are not vacant, fine? But that's not the case that we should use 4d. We have to observe the magnetic behavior, it is diamagnetic. If we use 4d, then there will be 1, 2, 3 and 4 unpaired electron and it will be paramagnetic. So, in this case, these electron has to pair up. Fine. Only then you can explain its diamagnetic behavior and moreover by doing this you can also create two vacant d orbitals. Fine. So, like this is this is the situation now. Now you have two d and one s and three p orbitals which are vacant now but as it is continuing, I am explaining that they have to hybridize first. So all these six will hybridize to give you six D2 sp3 hybridized orbital of same energy and same shape. So it will be again using uh, 3D orbital. So it is inner complex, inner complex. So there will be six cyanide ions donating their six electrons. Six lone pairs in these six hybridized orbitals forming same type of bonds with cobalt, right? So if you see 
that number of unpaired electron in this case zero except for this complex is diamagnetic. Fine. So this is how we can explain. Once we know the magnetic behavior, we can easily explain this using PPT. So we say that this is the limitation of PPT that uh, its magnetic behavior should be known. But you see, if the magnetic behavior is known, then VBT very well explains that magnetic behavior, right? But the thing later on we'll see that it could not answer the question that why these electrons are getting paired up here, fine? So just by pairing, it is explaining the magnetic behavior here, but it could not explain the cause of pairing, right? Okay, now let me take another example of the cobalt complex. In this case, I am keeping certain things same that is center metal, cobalt, its oxidation state, coordination number all are same but I am just changing the ligand. Here I will take fluorine, fluoride ion as the ligand. All these things will remain same. The ligand is same and this complex, this is surprising, this complex is found to be paramagnetic now. Fine. Now well, let's explain this again cobalt plus 3 ion. This is the orbital representation. Fine. 3D, 4S, 4P. Now in this particular case, you have 6 electrons, just like in the previous case. Right? 4 are vacant, you need 2 more. You can either use this by bearing or you can use 40. But the complex is paramagnetic. See here, right? If you pair up these electrons, then the complex will become diamagnetic in nature. Fine. So, in this case, the fluoride ions are present. So, and the complex is found to be paramagnetic in nature. So, inner d orbitals will not be used. According to VBT, we will be using outer d orbitals. Fine. So this is the hybridization. 1s, 3p and 2d will be used for hybridization. So all the fluoride ions will donate their electron pair in these vacant, d or or vacant orbitals which are 6 sp3 d2. Again, now in this case it is different, it is outer complex now, right? So here fluoride donating its lone pairs forming metal ligand coordinate bond, 6 coordinate bonds of same energy, fine, same length and strength. So number of unpaired electron if you count in this complex are 4. So this complex is paramagnetic in nature, fine? So this is how. Uh, you see the difference here, central matter remains same in the same oxidation state but changing the ligand is changing its magnetic behavior, fine. So let me take one more example and then we will finish the cases of uh, octahedral complexes using VBT and we will shift to coordination number 4. Now I am having, next example is a complex of magnes in its plus 6 oxidation state, right? This complex of magnes is uh, found to be paramagnetic in nature. Fine. Here, if you simply calculate magnes is in uh, plus 3 oxidation state, but before that I have told you write the metal configuration first. R cone 3D5 4S2. So magnes in plus 3 oxidation state, it will be R 